and the chandeliers The wanting and dining The menu is blood, sweat, and tears Everybody ready, raining the confetti Champions are born right now Everybody clever, click goes the hammer Run when you hear that sound Gonna make it to the finish line What's up everyone, it's your boy NS Racing 42, aka Nathan Saving here, and welcome everyone to finally the 2019 NL 2003 Big One. The biggest big one ever. Over two and a half months ago we started with 120 total drivers from six different leagues. And now it has come down to 42 total drivers. Seven representing each league, and it is time to see if who will be crowned the 2019 NL and three big one champion, and to see which league leaves you as the team championship or has the team championship. I am joined by not one, not two, but three co-commentators for tonight. Please welcome Elijah Gordon. Travis Granton and Luke Rainey. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hello. So, my first question is to Elijah Gordon. So, with this trap being so wide, so big, and so faint in the turns, and, and the scene speeds about 230 to 250, what is your strategy to just make it? Till the end of the race here tonight. That's ba you just basically pointed it out right there. It's just so make it to the end. But more importantly, is is sort of goes along with making it to the end. It's just surviving because you know with these with these cars that do not have the restrictor plates in them, it enables them to go 230, 250 miles an hour here at this racetrack. So I would definitely have to just survive, just play my cards right, pick my spots and just try to make it to the end and if I play my cards right and I've chosen the right positions I might be there but uh, we might you might <laughs> you might be there uh, by the time the race is over to possibly get a good finish or win the race for your team very true my second question is to Luke May so we know that there will be pit stops I don't know how many to be is that but there will be pit stops probably two or three how big will pit stops play a role here tonight I think the biggest thing whenever you have pit stops at any race track and especially a super speedway race is the waves that are coming in it is the most ideal situation for you to be in either the wave that has the least amount of cars that are entering or you are the first batch in because if you are the second or third batch in on a green flag pit sequence at least and we might have just a bunch of cautions throughout we don't even have to worry about green flag stops but you can sometimes get held up, there's stack ups, everyone's just trying to get down on that bottom side, they start slowing down. Nice thing you know, is that most of the time, cars are able to merge off the racetrack before they decelerate off turn number four whenever they're trying to enter pit road, so maybe that won't be such a problem. Uh, but pit stops, they will be important, and exits matters especially, you don't want to lose a draft uh, by a pit sequence. Yeah, really true, and it could end up being a couple of late race pit pit stops and if we're not in that lead pack the five laps to go you might not have a shot in fact you won't have a shot at the this race pit three my third and final question is to Travis Crampton so Travis knowing that all that goes into mind you have a team you have a league teammates you have 
all these different factors in involved. What do you do? Late in the race, do you help more teammates? Or do you just go for broke and go for the big one victory on the own? Well, it all depends where, what position you are coming into the end. If you're towards the back, just find your teammate, hook up, go to the front. If you're towards the front, then just go for broke. And if you have a bunch of teammates up front, then good. If you don't, then you're on your own. So it's going to be a free-for-all, I think, at the end. Uh, on the last lap, I'll just have to wait and see how teammates play each other throughout the race. Yeah, that's for sure. Of course, we have seven clubs for each league. And we've seen in qualifying that some of these leagues might not play nice with each other. So we just have to wait and see. A lot is at stake. A lot is on the line. And at the end of these 50 laps, we will know who will be the 2019 and our 2003 Big One Champion. Here is the top 10 starting positions for the 2019 and our 2003 Big One. On the pole is number 148, a Thomas Troxel. And in the number 94, it is Damian Blue. And the number 60 for Team NLFSOL is Landon Smith Jr. And the number 16 for um, Team NRSL is Mitchell Collins. And the number 19 for, in the, for NRSL is Zach Rogers. And, and then it's the number 17 also for the um, NRSL, Jonathan Solon. And then starting in 7th, you have the 06 for N NSCLA. DJ Reed and starting eighth, also from the NNSCOA, is the 09 of Jake, is Jacob Thibodeaux. And round out the top 10 is the number 23 for NRSL of Kev Sheeler and the number 105 of Landon Lions for Team TLN. Obviously, there is a lot of N. RSL to have starting inside the top 10, but that will probably not matter as this is a super speedway track. With that being said, let's get the engines firing and rolling finally after two months of waiting for the 2019 you know, 2003 big one. Let's go from Coca Cola. Drivers! And all 42 cars will get worn off, and it looks like they will for the 2019 and 2003 big one. Like I said, it's been two months in the waiting, and it is finally going to happen. So, I'm going to ask you guys this. What team and what driver do you think will be able to get it done here tonight for the 2019 NL 2003 big one. I'm going to oh. go with... Uh, I'll, I'll go Team NRL with uh, Jay Jefferson, the 97 car. Get the job done here today. Uh, I'm going to go with Team NFC Ray, and I'm going to say it's going to be the number two of Carson... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to second that with NNSCRA. However, I have to go with Jessica Shelton. She's definitely one of the best drivers in, in the business, and I really think she can get it done. Well, I, I, I think that everyone has a shot, but I'm going to have to say, representing the NOFSOL, I think the defending champion will be able to go 2 in a row, the 73 of Daniel McMillan. It's going to be a wild one. 50 laps. Probably two, maybe three pit stops. We might not even have green flag pit stops. They might be all under caution. How many crashes will we have? And who will be able to come out on top? The 2019 in our 2003 big one. It's finally going to happen. Which team will win? Here we go. The 2019 in our 2003 big one is underway at Coca-Cola Super Speedway.
and Thomas Trotzel and the 148-14 to in the lead the first lap <laughs> here in the 2019 in, in the 2003 big one. And you see further behind him, there's a little bit of double file, and then once you get a little further back, there's three wide going on. And that's one of the things you have to watch out for, because here at uh, here at Coca-Cola Super Speedway, once you get to the end of the back straightaway, everyone sort of starts inching closer to each other before they get into the turn. That could be a big, big thing to look out for in this race. The thing I am noticing, though, with this pack and the shape that it's taking right now is that these lanes are pretty narrow, you know, they're not running the entirety of the racetrack. I have seen before in some races the Coca-Cola Super Speedway, including previous versions of the NR2003 Big One, where cars, they just run so wide, they even get the wall. I don't really think it's going to be a problem today based on the lanes these guys are running. And another thing to kind of throw in there is that the sun is out, the racetrack is pretty slick, so, but these drivers are definitely holding on to their race cars right now, so... They're not slip sliding anywhere, getting up towards the wall, so that's a good thing as for just for the time being. Yeah, very true. Right now probably about the calmest they will get always long. Here early on. Now these guys are starting to fan almost the whole field is double file at the most. The fate I'm a, the fate of, I'm occasional three wide. Right now it is the number nineteen. Representing the um, SL of Zach Rogers out front. And most of these drivers I've never heard of, so I don't know if they're good or not. But obviously, if they've made it this far into the main event, they're probably good. A lot of town in this field. I am interested to see how long the 19 of Zach Rogers is able to stay out in front of him. As I say that, there they go to the inside. Blowing right by, no help in that outside line. That's a bad And there they go. Oh, already. Wow. The A sits at Jacob Rose. And the 49 of Justin Lightning. Representing the, the, NL, the NILA and the A sits representing the NLOL. And the 49 is stuck on Pitbull, stuck on the apron. Very surprising that there was a caution at this point in the racetrack. It seemed like everybody was running pretty stable, but there might have been some sort of four wide at the back of the pack and just a little bit of fighting for a lane uh, that may have caused this incident. I don't know, but I believe continue in this race, but might be up the pace and might have to deal with them as lap traffic moving forward. That's a bit concerning. The beauty about it was it was only just a two car incident, so we didn't really yeah. got, managed to get away with it, just two cars. Yeah, definitely. And we are going to watch and see, does anyone decide to pit early on here on lap number five? And looks like they will. Everybody. Everyone's so far. Yeah, from the looks of it. Yeah, that looks like everybody. And, yeah, everyone is going to pit here. A busy pit road here on lap number five. Not a bad chance to take. Oh. Well, speaking of five. The one, 155. I don't know what he's doing. Um. Yeah, that's not right. Jeremiah Dwayne right now. It's just sitting on the he's, apron. He's, he, he, he's stuck. stuck between. He's stuck between the banking and the apron. I look, well, for what it looks like, he's trying to get back up on the racetrack, but the problem is the bank is just so steep, you can't get back up there. That reminds me of hillside as well. You know, we see a hillside, and sometimes that happens before cars get caught in the banking. Same story here as well as Armory Digital. You know, those type of tracks with extremely steep banking like this presents good racing, but it comes with a price, and that's the price right now it's paying for uh, uh, Dwayne. And, yeah, that's true. And he did get teleported, so tough wait for Jeremiah Dwayne. But meanwhile, it was the number 19 of Zach Rogers who won the race off of pit road. And with that being said, let's see if what brought out the first caution of the day in the 2019 NR2003 and and Big One from Coca-Cola Super Speedway. Well, this is what happened. As they were entering turn 3 and 4, they were all nice and calm, but towards the back, 
they would think about going five wide at Super at Coca Cola. I don't know what they were thinking, but it, it did not work. The 38 squeezed the 49 of Justin, Justin Lightning down in the 86. Of Jacob Rose was nowhere to go, and the big hit into the outside wall for both of them. Tough break for both the Aces and the 49. But I don't know why they were thinking about going 4 and 5 wide early on. I mean, it was only on lap 5, but that's, that's just what happens here at Coca-Cola. Biggest big one ever, and they're trying to make big moves early on. Here we go, one more look at it. As you can see, they, the 38 just got clipped by the 49, and the 86 turned turn them and just went up the race track. Nothing that they could have done, and the 49 just got stuck on the apron and the track. Tough way for both the 49 and the 86. And then, while they were slowing down trying to pit, just a stack up happened between all of these guys. The 42 got turned by the 27, and I believe the 155 got turned by the 38. Matthew Brown got stuck on the apron, and then 55 tried getting the 155, tried getting off of it, but he just couldn't. And that is what happened to him that caused that weird incident to happen during pit stops. And then on pit road, the 38 was going to come down onto pit road for his pit stop, and the two didn't know it, and he just full on slammed into the 38 and knocked him out. That's a double whammy right there because here on pit road, you 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 basically you have no, nobody knows what's going to happen because there's some drivers that are trying to pit, some drivers trying to get out, but there are also drivers that are that you know that are going down pit road. And you just can't you just can't really dictate what's gonna happen on pit road. Yeah, very true. Tough break for Mark Davidson. Carlson Gum did get rolling again, but how much damage is he gonna have and will he have to come that will he have to come back down onto pit road before we go back green. We just have to wait and see. Speaking of go going back green, let's go back green right now in the twenty nineteen uh middle two thousand and three big one. And welcome back here for the 2019 NR 2003 Big One here. And we are going to go back when at the line on lap number 9. And right now the cars that are out are the 86 and the 49. So we don't have to deal with either of them as lap traffic. The 38 is one lap down. He's still on pit road. The 35, he was on pit road. He went back around and pitted again. And he's one lap down, and Matthew Brown, he's back on the track, but he is also one lap down. So, 37 cars are left on the lead lap. And it will be the number 19 of Zach Rogers leading us back to the green. The number 70 of Amounts was it? I don't know. Um, the 70 is in set. <clears throat> Thank you. Um,. <laughs> The 70, the 9, the 1, and the 153, the top 5, back green in the 2019 and 2003 pick one. It's going to take these guys about a lap or so to get up to speed again, but the 70 of um, Lozano is not going to waste any time and go for the, right for the race lead. Yeah, that left a 19 out of the draft for just a split second, and he didn't have anybody behind him. It's like the same case going down the back straightway. He's just trying to find a spot in line at this point. And no one's... Well, I mean, Foreman lined up right, right there in second place. Behind and I, Jessica Sheldon, teammates working together for the NSCRA. How long will that last, though? We just have to wait and see. He is one of the... I mean, I always drives Noah Clifton, but he's going to get... Shoved into the middle and no one's going to help him. The 24 is up to third now. That is Kyle Keefe for the NRSL. Yeah, Team NRSL starting to show a little bit of muscle here. Putting up a fight with Team NSCRA. Of course, the NILA is at a disadvantage really bad right now. Because three of the drivers... Were involved 
in some way, shape, or form in that last caution. So the NIOA is at a big time disadvantage right now. Uh, looks like Shelton's going to lose all the help right here down the front straightaways. There you see the 24 jumping down to the inside. Kyle Key's going to easily get this race lead with help from behind. Three wide entering turn number one. As I believe this oh. is a 65 here at the second place. Justin Zidell got loose. I'm off of turn number two and almost lost the thing, but he saved it. Three wide throughout this yeah. lead pack oh. now. Yeah, three wide, about three rows deep there. Then you look a little bit further back. You got a few uh, stranglers back over here. Oh. Lots of discombobulation in this field as a result of these incidents so far here today. But looking at back the three wide back in there. Oh. The six cars coming out of pit road. Oh, the five has damage. Something happened between the five and someone. Because the five has damage. The two is back on to pit road. Flying foot his damage a little bit more. He's going to be out of contention for the W here today. But. It's Justin Zidell in the 115 of Julius Anderson, 1-2 right now, here in the in, uh, 2003 big one. And here is my man, who I predicted was going to, to win the 73 of Daniel McMillan. He, he won this thing last year. Can he get it done once again? We just have to wait and see. Still very, very early on. Gonna have a huge burst momentum as he turn number two. The way he arced it through that corner was very smart. He didn't want to get up there too soon, so what did he do? He jumps to the outside. I know, just get there a little bit slower. Now he's gonna jump to the inside, get a position, maybe even a second one here. Get up to the runner-up spot there in turn number three. He'll easily do that. Gonna get two birds with one stone there. Not too bad of a move there by uh, Daniel McMillan. These guys are trying to side up a little bit, I think. And three wide once again is, and it looks like this first pack is starting to uh, have a gap on the second pack a little bit. And three wide is going to be a okay. Just don't want to go four wide here, or we're going to see a crash. And why does this always happen? I go through the field, and we have a lead change. Daniel McMillan out front in the number seventy-three. So far, everybody's kind of spread out here, buying just buying their time. Just even though they're racing, they're getting some. They're just trying to ride around, try to get their cars pretty much figured out, and then they're making. And then at the same time, they're racing. So not too bad of what's going on over here. And what that single file at the front of the field, it's actually allowing them to put a little bit of diff distance over to mid pack. But right here. They're going to freight train their way past the 73, but they're going to go three wide instead with, I believe this is Idell jumping down to the end of, inside here with help from Jessica Selton. A crazy move from Justin Idell, making it three wide, and he is now out front here at Coca-Cola Super Speedway. And here's the thing, we're going to have lap traffic in the rest of this race, that's for sure. And we're going to see a lot of, a lot of it here soon, maybe. Because um, the 17 and the 2 are just now going into turn 3. And these guys are all the way on the back stretch. About a 25 mile an hour difference. Yeah, this just goes to show you how quickly these guys are going to catch up to the other slower traffic coming up here in just a few laps time. And the, way, and the more that these drivers keep racing, because... What they're going to have to do here is once they catch up to that lap traffic, they're going to have to find out how they're going to get around it, how, to, how they're going to get around the slower cars. And if they can't do that, one line is going to get held up. Or maybe both of them. The amazing oh. thing I find is that for 25 miles an hour, just put this in perspective here, if we were to have green flag conditions for one hour straight, we would catch up to that two car eight times that is just ridiculous i don't even know why you're out on the track at this point 
but there's certainly a, a potential to have more accidents as we progress through this race. So I guess there is some reason behind it, but your shot to win is eliminated here. It's absolutely zero, and I, I don't really see much uh, sense running on this racetrack with your with that type of car. Yeah, definitely. I don't know why that they're even out on the track, like you said, but right now it is the number 40 representing Team NILA, Freddy Solo out front, battle for second between the 95 and the um, 188 of Matt Tut, a big time driver over on Napa fan, and now he is um driving for Team TON, and like um, t Top Director said in the um, LCQ, Months ago, this is probably gonna, this is probably gonna be the send off for team for the um, TON. So, would, would it be something if one of his drivers could end up winning the whole shebang here this year? That'd be huge. Of course, team TON with all those triple digit numbers. Here comes the A to a Priya Shane trying to take. The race lead away up to second now in that number 82. Got some drivers going a little bit wide down that back straightaway. But they're going to come right back up, up against the wall, and then right back down. The problem is when you do that is what if another driver that's a little bit, that's taking a deeper line than you gets a better run? Just like what happened to the 19 here. That he left the bottom open for too long, and that allowed some other drivers to get to the inside and capitalize. Watch this run, and Nathan Norman's going to get on the top two right here, side by side. I'm not exactly sure when it's going to happen. He's just going to charge right in there. I'll see what he. I was going to be interested to see how he makes this move, but oh, the 19 actually gets underneath him. The 19 said, "Not so fast, woman. I'm going to chase down those top two before you do." But he doesn't have that much help because the 115. Is split between the two, but here comes the 40. A lot of help on the inside lane. Almost three wide there, Danny McMillan. Oh, almost made a three pit wide. stops. Pit stops. This is what you talked about, Luke. I didn't expect it to be this early in the race. I mean, we're not even, you know, we're on lap 21 and we pitted about lap 5 or so under the caution flag. So we've had about 15 laps of green flag racing and these guys are already signed to come in. Those two, I don't really like their chances, so I don't think they're going to get much draft by themselves on the exit. That's going to cost them a couple seconds once this all cycles through. Hopefully they come out close together, though. Uh, but once this, once we get a big pack of cars that comes in, a lot more likelihood that we're going to see guys attached together in this draft. I mean, that right here in a match, we're going to see... About half the fuel be coming in. And watch the 82. It there it is. Here comes another group. Careful, watch the stack up. Oh! The, I, I believe that's the 90. Yeah, the 97 ran into the back of the 70 right there. Oh, man. Oh, oh! 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 oh. A little bit of contact there. That's the thing. Oh, 44 almost got spun out. <laughs> Pit Road is... It looks wide, but these guys are having a really troubling time getting on, getting on and off of Pit Road. And these drivers, they're... Oh, I'm, I'm definitely thinking that they're definitely going to want some really good pit stops because the difference between a pit stop on the other, under yellow flag and green flag under the yellow... You can pretty much just take your time big here at it because it only takes a few minutes for these drivers to get around a racetrack under yellow flag speeds. But, on, but under green flag conditions, it could uh, just a couple seconds spent on the race, spent on pit road, a few extra seconds could mean hundreds of yards on the racetrack. And Noah Clifton, he came in the lap before and he's just stuck on pit road. So I don't know if what happened to the 44, but a tough way. To another NIOA driver. Team in NIOA is just not having a good one here this year in the, the um, 2003 big one. Looks like. Oh, 
Cavaliers, but this is going to be tough to do, figure out, sort, sort through this. But uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how big this lead pack is going to be. And, you know, with these guys so spread out like this, perhaps we won't see a caution the rest of the way through, though it's still definitely possible. So I have a little bit of disorganization coming on the pit road for future sequences, and that could bring out a yellow. It would definitely be a lot more likely to see a yellow if we were all riding in about 25 car pack rather than about a bunch of six car packs. That's true. And here comes the A to a preem preeminent change just blows on by the, the top two that came out off of pit road. Wow. Oh, it's very curious for them to just let the outside, let the guys go on the outside lane like that. They gave them enough space for that to happen. I mean, it looks like they're just going to slide up and, and take the lane away, but then they merge down just a little bit and just say, you know what, fine, go ahead. I mean, there's there's no chance for them. They didn't, they didn't even have a prayer. Now, now they're two seconds behind or so, but these two by themselves, not going to make up a lot of time. There's a big pack behind them. I think they're going to have a much better shot. Of, of getting in better lap times and closing in than those two will alone. Trying to pull a tandem draft, but it's not going to work. These, this pack has a total of six cars, and it, compared to two, if these guys can get single file, then they will be able to close in. But that's what these top two are doing. They are staying single file, but I think even with these guys going single file, they're going to lose time. Well, they were single file, but not anymore. Freddy Solo just ditched the A2. Well, maybe this is a plan from two different teams. The um, NILA and the NOL. The NOL. Because now, they're single file again. Or maybe not because the oh, A2 is. wants to be out front. The problem is with these two, the more that they keep trading that top position, the more that's going to allow that second group of cars to just reel them right in a lot quicker than what they would if the front two were single file. Yeah, that's for sure. Right here. Oh, yeah, they're in the draft already. I mean, they're going to be right there, I'd say, in about half a lap or so. They're side by side for lead again. I mean, at this point, it's just who cares about trading distance? Clearly, that's not going to work. Just battle it out and enjoy it while you can before this pack eats you up. Mm-hmm. And they're going to eat these top two up right about now. Here is the second pack being led by the 43, representing the NILA Ben Crouch is up front. So See, this run's going to dissolve a little bit right now. Not sure exactly where they're going to want to go, but the 43 is going to be able to rotate on this inside line, and that's going to be a lead change right here for Ben Crouch moving to the point. And now they'll go three wide with the 115 to the inside. One. I heard lap traffic coming up here. And there is the two. Oh. So now that puts these other drivers in a predicament here because oh, they're oh. going three. Oh. They were going three wide. But it looks like they're going to go three wide again here. But the problem is they're coming up on lap traffic, so they're going to have to get themselves situated or else one of those lines that uh, the two might be in is going to get held up. Gosh, crash. I mean, exiting turn number two, he almost slid up and triggered an incident uh, with that three-wide situation. He crashed during qualifying. They want to crash during the race as well, but the two did come down pit road, so that very, I don't know if that was a... Very wise decision. Nice thing to do one way or another. 19 and the 56, they were side drafting the entire time on the front stretch, trying to make the, the 56 slow down. Josh Crash, you mentioned he did crash in qualifying, more like a spin, but he started dead last in 42nd. Now he, he is all the way up, up to second place now. You in the in our, in, for the in our 2003 big one. 115, gonna try to get to the inside for second. And the thing is, he kind of gave up the bottom right there, and kind of—I wouldn't say allowed that to happen. I don't think that was the intended result, but uh, he certainly didn't do anything to prevent that. And uh, let's try and get single file back once again. And take a look at this back right here, pretty decent size. Got about uh, trying to get in it. We might end up seeing a, about 
10 or 12 more colors end up having a shot. These guys are looking really well besides the number um, 95 of Alexander Lowe. The rest of the pack is seeing a fire for the most part. Never mind, they go pretty wide. Um, and speaking of Josh Crash, there he goes, the race lead. Got a pretty good push from that 43 car. My concern once this pack catches up is that it's going to be all for naught because I'd say three laps later, we're going to hit that one additional round of pit stops. I think that's all it's going to be from here to the finish. Just one more sequence. I mean, cautions could obviously change the way these guys come in and what they do there. Uh, but those pit stops, it's going to disrupt this pack once again. And rather than having 15, 16 cars in it, it's going to get reduced to... I don't know, maybe four or five if things don't play out the best way. Well, here's another concern here, lap traffic, because that's also going to play a complexion on if that second pack is going to catch up to this lead group, because the more lap traffic that the lead pack catches, the easier that it's going to make for the second group to pull right up. Yeah, these guys... The second group, they're not too far behind, so they don't even have to really deal with it as much as the first group does. I mean, the first group's probably going to shuffle the lap cars out, and then the second group's going to be able to just go right through as they carve the path for them. Yeah, that definitely. This is a jumbling mess right now, but it's about five laps away from, from the second round of green flag pit stops, because we pitted on lap 21... Oh, that was a little close there. Almost crashed right there. But yeah, it should be pit stops about lap 35 to 36 for these main drivers that are on the lead lap. And like you said, it, we have a gigantic pet now of about 18 cars. But for how long? Just five or six laps. That's how long. These guys want to get up front as soon as they can and have a shot at the win after the pit stops here in this one and actually it's going to be fairly close on field because they're going to be pinning about lap 35 to 36 15 laps later that's about lap 51 to 52 so, so this could be a fuel mileage race yeah if they don't get the cars filling up on fuel we could see some guys run out and be a lap or two short. I think a lot of that also comes down to this. If some guys just take fuel only, if they don't take any tires, that's going to shorten the length of the pit stop. You don't get as much fuel in that situation, but if you take two tires, you get a little bit more fuel. Perhaps you'll be able to get a little bit more fuel in. You'll definitely get all the fuel you need whenever if you take a four-tire stop, but splashing gas is not going to cut you. you got to take some tires to increase the length of the pit stop. I mean, you might as well. You, there's no sense in just taking two full cans of fuel and not putting tires on the car. So I, I would expect to see most of these guys take tires so they, that way they can carry it out to the end of this race. And single file right here as these guys try and perhaps they're trying to sort this out before they have to start coming down the pit lane. You know, still a little bit racy, but not trying to be as racy as what they would typically be because they know they're going to have to come down pit road. They don't want to have an incident. Yeah, really. They got a little bit aggressive there with the 82 and the 43 for the yeah. second position, but Pre McShane got the better part of that one. Yeah, very really true, and I and I ah uh, and I agree on the point there, Luke, because they it's only going to be maybe a lap or two on, until pit stops, so and they don't want to be three wide and have someone wanting to go on the outside lane. And then just cut down and and have a crash and have a caution. So they have to figure out some kind of strategy with, with this entire league pack, so nothing bad happens here in the, just a couple of laps. And this advantage is going to come with having a pit sequence while racing in the pack is that if they are double file the cars or even triple file, any cars on the outside line might not be able to come down pit road. Though entering pit road is pretty easy at this racetrack in terms of merging from the track in the pit lane, so maybe that won't be so difficult for some. Uh, but, you know, obviously, number one concern at pit road at this racetrack is having stack ups on entry. And now here we go. We got some cars in the back that are coming in. First three cars coming in. That's um, going to be interesting because uh, 
there were only three cars, as I just mentioned, that just decided to come down pit road. So for these drivers to come into pit road, I would have to say you would have to be down on that very bottom line to, to come in. So that way it's a little bit easier for other drivers to, to get situated in a single file formation. So if you're up on a higher, higher line, you might have to go around one more time before you can make a pit stop. So it's exactly what we saw right there. Everyone on the outside line had to get had to get stuck, and I don't know how much leeway there is with the fuel window here. What happens if they get stuck one more time? Are they able to make it all the way around? This is a three mile racetrack, folks. It's not going to be very easy to do. It's not going to be easy whatsoever. If it's hard to save fuel at Pocono or Daytona that are only two and a half miles long, then how hard is it going to be? Doing at a three mile track, it's going to be very difficult. And I think now that we're going, for the most part, single file, besides some lap traffic, everyone should be able to pit this time by. Well, maybe not. Right. Oh, look at that aggressive Whoa, entry. That's, <laughs> oh, who is that? 153, holy smokes. Austin Johnson. That was yeah, really if there, if there were more cars competing, that would have been a huge, huge oh! catastrophe. Oh, that changes everything. Speaking of catastrophe, you're oh, right, this does God. change everything. It was just a matter of time before lap traffic was going to cause something. Well, there's... That's one way of how to change the whole complexity of the big one. Just have the number two spin out. Oh man. Now that is going to trap some of these other cars that just came into pit. Possibly a lap down. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens here. There's no delta at this racetrack. You know, lap times are about 43, 44 seconds long. This is a long pit road and it takes a while to accelerate up to 230, 240 miles an hour. So, yeah. Imagine everybody that came in is going to be trapped right here, and the way we might only have a couple of cars are going to be able to contend for this win, which is very unfortunate. But stance that you have to expect whenever you pit early uh, for green flag pit stops. You know, they, they knew the risk heading into it. They gambled. It didn't work out. And for the guys that stayed out, they get to live on for uh, another twelve laps or so. That's so oh. lucky. Day. Oh, whoa! Oh, he's warming! Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, no. oh the race is... Oh, oh, no! Oh, my gosh! Oh, my God! That was two cars upside down. What was that all about? Woman just plowed into the 43. Oh, Man, and what was that all about? Awesome. Whoa! Right there. Even, oh my God! I don't even know why. Sorry, that's unbelievable. That's that's um that that's gonna throw a monkey wrench into the who wins this race. Careful. We're still gonna have racking right here, and someone's gonna get caught in the apron. That's the 09. Here. And I've never seen that before. And again here with this 09, we ran into this similar situation with uh, Jeremiah Dwayne, just stuck on the apron, same with the 44, just trying to merge right back up on the racetrack, but it's because of that steep banking, they can't do it. Well, I stand corrected, the 09 did it. <laughs> so it's just the 44 that's having the problem, because the thing is, the only way you can get back on from the apron to the banking is if you can carry enough speed, and I think that's what the 09 managed to do. Well, this changes everything to the fact that we just had a huge crash after the caution came out and when the caution came out at, at all, this changes everything and I don't know if it's going to even be left to have a chance in on the lead lap. This is going to be absolutely wild here at Coca-Cola, but... Let's take a look at what happened with the initial crash and the crash after 
these guys will ap after these guys will already take him for yellow. Let's see if what happened. So this is the reason for the caution. Carlson Gum, who was always slow, came up barely on the number 44 of no eclipsing in. He spun probably about seven or eight times. But he didn't hit anything with the wide bat stretch and with the inside ball not being to all the way down there. He, he was able to keep it off of the inside ball, but he did get into the outside ball a little bit when he made contact with the number four. So tough weight with um, Carlson Gum. He's not had a good race, and that just adds to it here in the 2019 and 2003 big one. And then this is what happened to Nathan Orman. He was trying to catch back up. He just decided to yeet it, go onto the apron, and had no control and ran in, right into the back of the 43 of Ben Crouch. And then minute, and That's what... Sorry, go ahead. And then he just went up the racetrack, and because of the banking here at Coca-Cola, the only way that looking off of the banking is if you go down, and, and that's exactly what happened to Nathan Woman right about now. Causing the gun, Amazing. bam. It's just a hard hit right there. He just was up in the air for just a split second. Then you see Elijah Leonard in the 27 get involved in this one. He goes sideways, gets hit by Austin Thomas in the 153. Then the 95 piles right in. And then eventually the 95 is going to get uh, turned over on his roof by somebody. The 66 right there. Oh, man. He was pretty lucky that it was only just one one roll, but uh, but uh, he was just trying to get the car refired. But the problem is the nose is just pointed towards the banking, and then right here, the 60 for whatever reason, on his way to pit road, taps the 105. Pretty hard there. And I don't know what the 105 did to the 60, but. There's some tempers for them, and that's for sure. And there's not going to be some happy drivers at the end of this race and on to pit road. That's for sure. Not a lot of happy campers here today. On board with the one of Nathan the Woman. Yeah, you see, he was just carrying too much speed, and had he not done that, he would have been fine. And right here. As we lose our camera, and then the 95 gets slammed by the 66 as well. Man. And on board with Carlson Gun, he brought up the, the original Carlson, sees the carnage, tries to avoid it, just no let's go. You just ran out of time to react, and when you're in that kind of position, you only have a split second to react, and uh, he just didn't react in time. Welcome back here for the 2019 and 2003 big one here at Coca-Cola Super Speedway. The cars that are out from that one is going to be the 2, the 95, and the 27. The 09 is somehow out. And, um, obviously the one of Nathan Orman. And, let's just say there's only three cars on the, the lead lap now. The 78, the 188, and... The 43. So, and if it only gonna be eight laps, it's probably gonna stay that way with just three cars having the shot at the race victory. But the thing is, when you have a lot of cars that are either a lap down or on the tail end of the lead lap, they can play a factor in who <laughs> wins the race. And this, and with this many cars that are on the tail end of the lead lap or a lap down. That's a very big, very, very big chance. Yeah, really. Oh! The 05 blows up right in front of the 78! Oh my! And that slows. The 03 to players get held up on uh, the 43, I don't. He, he, yeah, he's not able to get past it, obviously, so I really don't think this matters as much as. Surface. I mean, as long as the top three get out or split still within a range of each other, this really doesn't mean much. However, 
25 car packs that's racing for that's racing uh, with the leaders. Now the leaders are within a pack of about 10 to 12 cars. And, and it's going to be, and it's going to come down to the 78 and the 188 because of the 43. With that back end damage, he's not able to catch up. He's way off the pace. And the 78 and the, the uh, 188, Juan Garcia, a very good driver on my, I'm um, on this channel, and Matt Tuck, a, a good driver on, on that, um, uh, on that performance channel, so, two good drivers left on the lead lap, battling for, for, for the big one, fit three. But so many lap calls, and... So many calls out on the tail end of the lead lap that th these guys can't even really race for the race win. They're just racing to get by these lap calls. And that's what you got to do. You got to man maneuver your way around the traffic and just hope and pray that uh, your other that your other rival on the racetrack that's on the lead lap and is trying to chase you down for the lead doesn't get around you. This is gonna be very bad right here. The 188 has a huge run. 78 is gonna get boxed in right here. He's gonna try and get down to the inside, kind of down to the bottom. He's gonna be the leader of this pack, but how quickly right here. It's gonna to come to, to five laps to go. 15 miles left though, in the 2019 NL 2003 big one. Matt Tuck, can he... It's like the... Go ahead. Pulling ahead, actually. Yeah, Juan Garcia, he's done a lot of things on this channel alone. Um, season 1 Eminem Sweat Series Champion. Former birthday bash winner. Former Richard Hollywood Stapes and Shootout winner. He's done a lot of things. And now, he's trying to win the biggest big one ever. The NL 2003 big one. But, then again, you have Matt Tuck. Drawing for Team T.O.N. It's the last race, m most likely. Can T.O.N. win in, in the final race? They're in a pretty good position to do it here, so... If uh, Team T.O.N. can pull it off, that would be pretty huge. And a good way to go out on top. It's a 50-50 chance right now. I mean, obviously, it's just these two, you know, mano y mano. At this point of it, and uh, I don't think there's going to be too much interference from the guys behind the 188 right now. So, see, he's got a comfortable advantage right now. And it just looks like there is a little bit of dirty air here. It's coming. Oh! Oh, well, my. How about that? 13 jumps low. The number 13. And that's going to hurt the 188 in a big way. The number 13. Well, that's the 13 also gets by Garcia here. If he does that, then that's going to pretty much balance and he things is. out. That might have conserved the advantage for the 188. And that's exactly what's going to happen right here. There he goes. In the 11 from the, um, and then SCLA, James Qualls also going to get by. Here comes Matt Tuck. You call it right down the middle, Luke. It just balanced everything out. And here comes the 188. But he couldn't get there. Now Tuck's going to be feeling the heat from behind from our lap cars. They won't get there either, so everything's going to work out perfectly fine for Matt Tuck. Still out in front, so Tuck back in it, but still in second oh, place. Oh, no! Oh, oh, my goodness gracious. Matt Tuck, uh, Matt Tuck has to pit. Does that mean... Can... Um... Can Juan Garcia, with two laps to go, can he make it? Oh, man. As long as he doesn't have to pay, I mean, the answer is obviously yes, but after that, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it looks like the nine's in control that right now, but that's a, that's in the pack. I mean, that's going to cycle all the way around, but until then, I mean, I think the control here, as long as he stays out this lap, he's going to be coming home a winner. And it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. Here he comes to the white flag with a bunch of lap cars and all by himself. If he can stay out for one more lap, he's got it. As long as he does not run out of fuel. Can Juan Garcia 
punch another ticket in his career. As long as he does not get involved in any crashes or does not run out of fuel. And there's Matt Tutt right there, devastating for that 188 and devastating for Team TRN. But coming out with turns 3 and 4, Juan Garcia, Eminem Strut Series Champion, Richard Hollywood Stapleton Shootout Champion, and multiple other things on his resume, he is now a NR2003 Big One Champion, and Team NROL wins the overall victory in, in the 2019 NR2003 Big One, and we have a caution on the last lap. Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh, oh my! That tuck was involved in that as well. Ah, oh, that just adds insult <laughs> to injury right there. And Even the wind winner was, was involved. Yeah, the is destroyed. And the winner <laughs> got caught up in this. Well, hey, the, the, race the race is, is over. over, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, and that I that that's kind of what it reminds me of you know when you the the winner of the Thanksgiving 500 as soon as he got to the line he just blew oh up. my oh oh, 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 oh my <laughs> <laughs> guys guys <laughs> we're gonna have a ride on pit road <laughs> it's gonna be like Every single league going after each other on each side of pit road. Oh gosh, I'm gonna see. Um, I'm gonna see goldfish thrown on above <laughs> here. Maybe Cheerios. Maybe some Coors Light. Maybe some Miller Light. <laughs> it, maybe some Valvoline flying up in the air. It, but gosh, though, what this is a this is probably the weirdest cooldown lap I've ever seen. <laughs> oh man. What? And, and and just to just to add to just the sprinkles to the cake, the winner got caught up in this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, I guess we have something to review um after we do the finishing results. Um, Juan Garcia still wins, but his car is destroyed. Um, he can still drive to victory lane regardless. <laughs> it, yeah, leaking oil and stuff, but still going to victory lane. Here at Coca Cola for the NR2003 big one. That was by far the craziest and wackiest race I've ever done. Before it was the season 2 of the other Red Bull Cup Series race at Texas. This tops it. What a race here at Coca Cola Super Speedway. Juan Garcia gets it done. Justin Lydell in second. Out, out of nowhere. Okay. Um, Noah Coles in third. Damian Blue in 4th, Zach Rogers in 5th, Kyle, Kyle Keith in 6th, Jessica Shelton in 7th, Pierre McShane in 8th, and Julius Anderson in ninth, and ran out the top 10, and the only 10 cars that finished on the lead lap was the 40 of Freddy Solo. DJ Lee in 11th, Zach Flintinger in 12th, James Qualls in 13th, Kev Sheila in 14th, uh, Thomas Troxel in 13th, 15th, Matt Tutt, he was going to get second, but he had to pit and then he crashed at the end of the race, and he comes home in 16th. Tough point for the Matt Tutt. Um, I was Lorenzo in 17th, Jay Jefferson in 18th, Landon Smith Jr. in 19th, and Bobby Frazier in 20th. 11th all the way down to 31st, they all um, finished 1-2-3. It was seven laps down, and then 30 second all the way down to 40 second all crashed out, and obviously, landing lines blew up right on the result. Um, before we decide if which league ends up winning and do the outro, let's see if what happened to the crash after the race was over here in the, the in 2003 big one. So all Matt, all heck broke loose, you know, on the last lap of the race. The 40 got absolutely dumped by the old six of DJ Reed. Right about there. And then, the 115 
Julius Anderson deliberately turned those sits after what he saw right in front of him. Anderson does a one amazing save, but the O sits. He just goes spinning and sliding, going into turn number one. All you see is smoke. And then, because of the banking, this is, what, this is what happens. The carnage began right there. Do you see the winner get involved? The 11, the, the Stadium McMillan, the 73. And then eventually, the 188 piles in here. There's the pole sitter getting a piece. There's Matt. There's the 188 right there. A Matt Tuck. That just adds insult to injury right there. The last race, he gets so close to winning, but had to come back, to, come down to just get enough fuel for the finish, then get involved in a wreck right at the end of the race. You see the 97 with some damage. Just a huge crash. I don't know what exactly happened, but. Well, obviously I know what happened, but I don't know why it happened, but just crazy, crazy way to end the 2019 and 2003 big one. But then that's not it. That's not it. Because the one, because the 76, he just drives around. He's clear of all that madness in turn one and two. He has already crossed the line, race is over, and then the 155 of Jeremiah Dwayne, the 76 of Ryan New, is up talking forced into the 155 and right into the back of him. So now you have the 155 guys probably going after the 76. The 76 might go after the 42 guys. I know, this is an all out, out madness. Um, This just sums up the um, 2003 and 2019 chaos. This is the Coca Cola Super Speedway, and this is the NR 2003 big one where anything can happen and anybody can get mad at each other, even the race winner. <laughs> oh man, well, with, with that being said, let's get back to the live shot to do the outro and to see which team won the overall victory. And with that being said, that's going to wrap it up here for the 2019 and 2003 big one. And it's been a couple months overdue, but we did it, and it was a wacky race to, to say the least. Um, Juan Garcia gets the win. And let's, and I'm gonna ask you guys, what are each of the final thoughts here for the 2019 NL 2003 big one? Mind blown for me, I will definitely tell you that because there's just so many things that happen in the race that just, that just were so strange. But it was a good, it was a good kind of strange though. I'd say this race was pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I enjoyed the race, and there's no denying that. But the, the key turning point was that caution about 15 laps to go. And it wasn't necessarily the wreck itself that was the turning point. It was the stuff that happened under that caution that I think really had an impact in it as well. But all those cars that were on the like the wave around, tail on the late lap, I mean, that all played into this finish. It was just that one minor and insignificant incident that really, I mean, I mean, it was just a car that spun around down the back straight away in front of very few, very little traffic. But that incident right there had so much implications. And what about your thoughts, Travis? I thought it was a pretty good race. I didn't commentate much, um, but I did watch it, and I thought it was a pretty good race. Uh, I was just officiating, so that's why I was in, I was in the officiating booth for this race. So um, <laughs> I thought it was a pretty good race. A uh, little bit crazy towards the end, but you know it's all all teams. So let them go at it. So I, I thought it was pretty fun. 
Yeah, my thoughts, it was a crazy race. Probably one of the craziest in our trust and three big ones I can remember. Um, just have to thank um, Napa Fan for letting me bring this back this year. More than likely, it will happen again next year, knowing I will have more time on my hands during next year, so that's a plus. But just have to thank um, Elijah Gordon, Travis Crampton, and Luke Ray for joining me up in the booth. Well, or in Travis's case, the uh, um, official any booth. Um, that was one awesome race. It was wacky. It was wild. It was everything they could imagine between six different teams and six different leagues. And some of the best of the best race on the track. And at the end of the day, it was Juan Garcia adding another piece of history on his resume. And it, it's just amazing. Juan Garcia a amazing driver and he just won the final driver and believe it won. Congratulations to Juan Garcia. Huge thank you to everyone who participated in every single league. The um TON, NROL, NOFSOL, NILA, NRSL, and the NNSCLA. All 120 people, 120 cars overall that signed up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If it wasn't for you guys, this wouldn't be possible to happen once again this year. So, um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, the team points to see if which team won the overall battle between all of the leagues. That will be at the end, end of the video for the outs. Yeah, at the end of the video as and it's the fun outs for Juan Garcia after he gets out his backup card. Um, so he can do fun outs here at the call of Super Speedway. Thank you guys so much for watching. And um for TJ Crampton, Luke Ray, and Elijah Gordon, I'm Nathan Stapleton, aka NS Racing 42. And um you've been watching the 2019 NL and three big one. And until this happens next year Um so long from Coca Cola. Bye! Slide.